Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Rick Staples, and what I'm here to, today to do is to talk to you about proper firearm selection for concealed carry. Uh, there are a lot of misconceptions out there about what firearm is going to be the best. Uh, personally, I think the best firearm is the one that you will actually carry. Uh, what firearm you carry is a personal matter. Uh, effectiveness is kind of up to the cartridge that's selected. Uh, that's pretty obvious. But there are a couple of misconceptions that people are uh, uh, working under that we need to probably dispel. Uh, one of the biggest misconceptions that I run into over and over again is that most ladies, when they decide that they're going uh, to uh, make the commitment to carry a uh, concealed firearm, is they say, well, I want a really small gun. Uh, and that's kind of like saying that I want a really small fire truck to come to my house to put out the fire. Uh, if you want a fire truck to come to your house, you want the biggest one they got with all the water it can carry, you don't want the smallest one. And the same thing basically applies to a concealed carry firearm. The, uh, the, the smaller firearms like this, uh, this Ruger LCP here are very popular. Uh, if, if your uh, particular fashion won't allow you to carry anything bigger, obviously a firearm that you will carry is going to be the order of the day. The one thing you need to understand though is that small guns like this, if this is going to be the primary firearm, tend to be, tend to be an expert's gun. By that I mean these guns are difficult to shoot well. Let's be honest, if you press the trigger on a firearm in some type of a, of a self-defense situation, you're going to hit one of two things. You're either going to hit an intended target or an unintended target. If you strike an unintended target with any of these firearms, I guarantee you it's going to be a very difficult uh, next few months because if you miss, that does not stop the fight, but it certainly starts the lawsuit. Okay? So small guns tend to be experts' guns. I like these guns for second guns or for backup guns. Larger guns are obviously more difficult, difficult to conceal. The reality is, is that uh, you're going to have to change your fashion sense one way or the other in order to carry a, a larger firearm. Larger doesn't necessarily mean better, but it does mean easier many times to shoot well. Uh, part of that is a function of the sight radius, and when we talk about sight radius, what we're talking about now is the distance between the front and the rear sights. Obviously, the bigger gun with the longer barrel, the longer slide is going to have the sights farther apart they tend to be a little easier to shoot well. Also, with the heavier weight of the gun, they tend to be easier to learn to manage the recoil of the firearm. Another uh, area in, in regard to this is the grip size, or how big the gun is to grip it. Uh, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that when you grip any firearm, what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to grip the gun so that when your hand is on the gun in a basic firing position, that your finger, your index finger, and your thumb kind of form the letter J. What that does is it aligns the bones of the arm with the bore of the gun. The other factor on, on grip is when you grip the gun, you want to be able to have visible space between your finger and the frame of the gun when your finger is on the trigger. If you do not have that visible space, what's going to happen is when you complete the trigger press, your finger will bump against the frame of the gun and you'll actually push the gun off to the support side. So that's a consideration too. Most of the smaller guns tend to be in smaller calibers. The smaller caliber, as we've already talked about, is going to be somewhat less effective. Uh, I get to, from people all the time, they say, well, you know, I want a small gun because the, probably the fight's going to be really, really close. I agree. It probably will be. But what if it's not? Again, this gun's going to be very difficult to shoot at any kind of range. This gun, because it's small, is also ten tends to be a little bit less effective than a gun of larger caliber number one, or actually even in the same caliber with a, s a slightly longer barrel, a little bit more velocity. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be more effective, it means it has a tendency to be more effective. Capacity on firearms, the capacity on, especially on semi-auto guns, means usually the more capacity that it has, the larger the grip's going to be. Uh, again, we go back to the fit of the gun. If I don't have that visible space between my finger and the frame, if I don't have that J configuration, then I'm going to run into problems in manipulation and shooting the gun well. So, especially ladies, make sure that you choose a firearm that is going to be, number one, a fit for you. Go out, handle different firearms, get your hands on them, see if you've got that J configuration in your hand, see if you've got visible space between your finger and the frame of the gun, see if it's going to be comfortable in your hands. Everybody goes, well, if it's a big gun, it's not going to be comfortable to carry. A very uh, a wise man by the name of Clint Smith once said that, that a concealed carry firearm is not supposed to be comfortable, it's supposed to be comforting, and I absolutely agree. 
Uh, you may have to change how you dress a bit if you're going to carry concealed. Um, some ladies like to carry firearms in purses. I'm not necessarily a big fan of that, although I understand the necessity from time to time. Uh, I'm not a fan of off, what I call off-body carry, uh, but uh, the, for some people that's a necessity. Uh, get the biggest gun that you can control well and get some good training. That's absolutely the, the next consideration after you select a firearm. Don't just go shooting. There are all kinds of people that want to go shooting. There are very few people that want to learn to shoot, and that's a big difference. So if you want to learn to shoot, find yourself a location where you can get good training and invest not only your money, but obviously your time. I'm gonna be real honest with you. Uh, I think time is more valuable because we don't know how much of it we have. So the reality is, invest your time, uh, invest your money in good training, and I think that uh, once you make a, a good educated selection, uh, you'll be happy with it, and uh, you'll be, even better than that, you'll be confident with it.